welcome back to What's Up with Ward TV and What's Up with Ward the podcast. My name is Woody Ward, and I'll be your cool captain on this self-help podcast. So please get in, buckle up, get ready, because it's about to go down. Remember to tap that like, follow, or subscribe button. That helps us to help you help others. And always, sharing is free 99, so tell a friend if you heard something you like here today, okay? Today, we have a phenomenal guest who's been there, done that, bought the t-shirt. This guest has a hustler's mentality and a heart of gold. So let's be encouraged and prepare to meet your favorite cousin. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Queen to the lab. How you doing, Queen? I'm doing well. I'm so grateful to be here. How are you? Hey, I'm delicious. But let's go ahead and get started and make this thing all about yeah. you. So in your own words, tell the audience who Queen is. Oh, who Queen is? Um, well, first things first is I'm very spiritual. Um. I strive off the most highs for my power, for my strength, for my direction. Um, I'm very loving, caring, outgoing, goofy. Um, my favorite thing to do is eat. <laughs> I think that is well known <laughs> that we should let people know that I'm going to eat every two hours. That's important. Okay. Um, I feel like yeah. eating what I eat helps my mind. It helps my body. Mm. It helps me be who I am today. So I think okay. that's important to know about me. Wonderful. So you like to eat a lot. So that means you're on your way to fat, Bill. Got it. All right. Um, so <laughs> is is Queen your real name? Was that what you No, just Queen is not my, my real name. But um, when you become a new creation, when you become a new person, when you become a new position, you get a new name. And um, I feel like I've worked hard for my name. Um, I'm different. My name is different from my friends, from when I'm at work to when I'm doing my speaking. Hmm. Ooh, I'm gonna get into all that. Okay, so let's go back to um, the beginning, so to say, and then work our way back up to where you are now. Um, where did you grow up at? I was actually born in Daytona Beach, Florida. Um, <laughs> with um, one sibling, I have an older brother. It's just me and him. Um, and we moved up here. Uh, my mom moved up here. My auntie was already living here for better job opportunities, for a better outlook, just to kind of get away from the environment. Um, yeah. And now they're all back. So I'm just still here. Wow. <laughs> Hanging Everybody on. Went back. Wow. Okay. So yeah. do you, how old were you when you left Florida? Um, It's uh, honestly a blur. I just know that I graduated high school here. So it was a lot of back and forth. Um, But I I would say I was solidly here, like 14, 13. I'm not really for sure. Um. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you get back to Florida that often, or you miss often. that? Often. Often. Um. Now that I'm an adult, I definitely go. Um. At least once a year, twice a year. Um. I haven't been this year, but I went last year. Uh. Like uh -huh. I said, my mom, my brother, grandma, my whole family's there. Only my auntie that got us here is still here. So. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. That's good. Now you grew up with both parents, or just... no? Just my mom. Okay. Okay. Yes, my mom. I always, I always ask that question because later on we get into dating. I, I want to know how, how that kind of affect people. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, okay, so you got one older brother. You said one older brother. Okay. Actually, so. I can actually um, put a quick statement on that if you want to about you know just the one parent in the household. You know, yeah, mine. Yeah. Honestly, for me. Um, Honestly, I didn't really think that it really affected me. Um, mm -hmm. Like, all I knew was my mom. Um, she made it look easy. Um, I didn't need for anything. I always had food, clothes. Um, it was probably not the, you know, the best things, but she made it look easy. And I don't, I mean, personally, as a woman, I didn't think I really missed out on anything um, for as having a man. And I mm -hmm. know it kind of sounds weird because most people do, but. My mom, she, I mean, she did the best she could. So I didn't, I don't know. It's weird. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, what kind of child were you like? Were you rambunctious? Did you run the boy? Were you a tomboy? Were you a girly girl? Um, Growing up, I was definitely a tomboy for sure. Um, I didn't really start wearing skirts and like showing my legs until I was like in my twenties, to be honest. Um, and then in my 30, like late, th oh, I'm telling my age, you didn't ask that yet. Okay. <laughs> you tell, you age. <laughs> Whoa, how, man. tell us how old are you, queen? I am 32. I 32. am 32. So closer than I got to my 30s, um, I did find myself actually more hit into my body, loving myself, um, dressing mm -hmm. just more 
pizzazz or more, I don't know the word, but you would think the younger you were just more out there. But now that I'm getting older, I think I feel like I'm more love and love in tune with my body and love myself. Okay. Yeah. Now, you, okay, so you said you're 32. Are you married or not married? No, I am single in Christ. Um, I am single and I'm learning more about my singleness and just uh, appreciating that season um, and allowing myself to to appreciate it and love on that and dwell mm -hmm. in that because it is a privilege. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's a, singleness is a gift too, if, especially mm -hmm. if you do it right. Take the time to like get to know yourself. And then that way, when you meet somebody else, you'll know what you want and what you don't want. Um, so yeah. What what about kids? Any kids, any ninos in this thing? Or <laughs> I, got a, I got two niñas, gatos. So oh. I, I have two cats. What? Two, no kids and two cats. No kids. See, see, that's why I said it's a privilege in my singleness because I also don't have any children. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but so I have two two fur babies. Um, they're the love of my life, and they definitely are my children. What are, What are their names? One name is Melodies. Melodies from heaven. Melody Mello Males. That's my baby, mm -hmm. and the other one is Soar. Soar like an eagle, not soar like a bruise, but she soars like an eagle. Okay. Well, I know one lady who started out with two cats. She had a three, four, five. Now she got nine. What's your cutoff number? Um, my cutoff is three. I can't okay, do no so more. But I definitely want one more cat um, and then a dog. I would do two dogs. Oh, my God. <laughs> Cats, cats seem to be independent, don't they? They, they kind of like do their own thing. You ain't got to pet them or nothing. They just I thought the same thing. I really did. That's why I got cats. I thought it was gonna be a lot easier, but uh, only thing I don't have to do is walk them. Them cats <laughs> are very clingy, very attentive. Um, now they just turned one last month, so they okay. definitely are one now. But growing up, mm mm. Mm mm. Okay. Well, yeah, I had two Rottweilers before. Never cats. I, I thought about a cat, but you know, I don't know. It's interesting that you got that. All right. So you you mentioned you don't have kids. So you're basically saving all kinds of money. What does it feel <laughs> like to be a kid? How how does that feel to be kidless? What, what, what what's the day? What's your day like? Um. Well, honestly, for a woman. It is kind of a, it just depends on like where, where you at before a woman to be 32 with no kids. It kind of, is, um, it can get emotional sometimes. So I have to make sure I remind myself that this is a privilege. This is a blessing. Um, because I mean, as a woman, you are naturally a nurturer. I mean, some mm. women, should right. I say that some women, yes. your body kind of urges for that nurture type of nature type of thing to, you know, take care and to, like you can just feel it in your body. So sometimes uh, some seasons is harder than others mm -hmm. um, because disclosure, I don't know if this is too much, but I've never uh, been pregnant before. So um, it, the thought in my mind of, wow, can you, you know? <laughs> so, you know, some people may have, you know, had abortion or miscarriage and don't have children where as I've never been pregnant. So I don't even know if I can conceive. Don't want to go test it out to try, but uh, that is a thought that comes in my mind with me not having children is, what if I can't when I try? Uh, but mm -hmm. I just stay positive and I just believe. So uh, day to day, um, I am very privileged and very spoiled. Uh, I travel alone uh, because mm. I can get up and go. Um, yeah. And I like to be able to, if I want to rest or if I want to go get something to eat, because I'm an eating person. You yes. know, yes. A lot of um, you know, friend groups they they are vacationing. They're getting away from the children, so they're ready to go turn up and they're ready to you know let loose, which makes sense. And honey, I just want to go eat and watch a book. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> I feel you on that. Uh, so you sound like you do eventually want kids, right? Yes. Yes. How many? How many would be a good number for you? Um. I mean, says the person who don't have any children, I would right. say as many as I can have, but oh my. Oh my God. I think that question would be for like when I have at least one, then I'll kind of know what I'm getting myself into. Yeah, that makes sense. That's actually very wise, too, because kids change your life. I think I told you before, I never wanted kids, but I ended up having two. Did I tell you about my great compromise? Yes. 
I yeah, believe. So, but share again. Well, my compromise was this. I was about to get married, and I talked to my future wife, and I said, uh, how many kids do you want? And she said, ah, I think I want two. I said, oh, okay, but uh, I don't really want Andy. She said, okay, we can just compromise. I said, okay, so we compromised and had two. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I, I love them. Our way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you know how that is. I think when they separate the girls and the boys in school from sixth grade, and the girls go this room, and dudes go that room, they tell y'all, it's got to be your way. Yeah. yeah your way just anyway <laughs> so yeah so so back to the kid thing so would you ever consider adoption or yes okay. yes i would definitely love to adopt mm -hmm. okay i thought about it but you know work with dcs a few years maybe not for me but uh let me ask you this do people often ask you how come you don't have any kids when you gonna have some do you ever get that uh, a lot often even my mother um my brother, disclosure again, um, my older brother, he is homosexual. Mm -hmm. So um, we're not getting no kids out of him. Love <laughs> him to death, but we're not getting no kids out of him. So my mom definitely does. And I would love to bless her with a grandchild. Like, you know, she might not have done everything perfect or be the perfect woman or whatnot, but I know that she is going to be a um, an amazing grandmother. And I would love to give her the opportunity to do so. Oh yeah, oh yeah. She she gonna babysit the cat sometime too, right? Uh, she has a dog, so I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Uh, now you had mentioned that you were getting to know Christ and, and taking that walk there. So that does that mean you can't date in someone right now, or you're just not interested in dating? Um. Well, I mean, I do believe that um, I am going through different seasons. Sorry about that. The kids. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're fine. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Okay, fine. Um, um, I do believe that I'm in certain season. I feel like they are a distraction. Um, mm. that um, they kind of feed off of my spirit. Um, that the the enemy kind of uses them. So I just. I kind of did open myself up this year to actually like dating and going out. Um, I was isolated for a while, mm -hmm. years. <laughs> um, and uh, I was like, okay, I think I'm ready to date. And I, I ran back. I said, Lord, never oh. mind. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you you took a you took a sabbatical from dating. It's something you just wanted to put on the show for a while. Um. Uh. Yeah, I mean, I went through a season where I practiced celibacy. So, and this now day and age, um, that is the that's that's it. You know, you date, mm -hmm. you go out. Hey, girl, let me come over. So, right. I guess that kind of pushed me to not dating because I know kind of what's out here. Mm -hmm. You know, I know kind of what they want. You know, when they look at me, this is you know, and so I just kind of kept it focused because I knew that that's not what I wanted. I didn't want to lead no one on. So I guess mm -hmm. those combinations kind of play of why I stopped dating. Understandable. Understandable. Now, let's just say, I want to talk a little bit more about this before we move on. So if you did date, what type of dude would it take for queen to submit to her king? <sighs> God's will. Um, it would just have to be a man of God. Uh, I mean, a striving man for God. I mean, no one's perfect. You know, I'm a sinner saved by grace for sure. Um, yes. Just striving after the word. Uh, he reads the word. Um, mm -hmm. Not only just, you know, a striver after God, but he has to read the word so that he can feel and encourage me as well. Um, have goals um, for his just, you know, uh, independency, generational wealth, um, territory, dominion with our name on it. You know, just really have a strive to do the purpose for God, like, um, you know, his will for his children. Um, I mean, he, I would want him to be financially stable and not even financially stable, just know how to manage money. Mm. Mm, okay. Because okay. yeah, you don't even have to like be finance, financially stable, but if you know how to manage $20, you know how to get discounts and save. I think that can you know, still help as well. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. 
That's a that's a pretty Down good list. Treat, pretty... treat a queen. Mm -hmm. That's an extensive list. So that a lot of guys out here often I hear say because you know I studied with over three hundred different couples and writing this book. And one thing I hear guys say is that women have a uh, not every woman. I'm just saying in general, but they say women tend to have a tendency to have expectations of men that they don't always measure up to. Do you feel you bring all those things to the table? And and, and to piggyback, the dudes do say that well, men are expected to do too much. So do you, mm -hmm. first question, do you think you measure up to all the things you're looking for? And what do you expect a man to do in a relationship, I should say? Yes. Um, personally, for me, I feel like I have, because I have taken the isolation season, I have, you know, worked on myself that mm -hmm. I've kind of, I feel like I've worked myself out of a of a man, if that makes sense. Like um hmm. for his degree, for his, you know, being independent. I feel like that's intimidating. Um the only thing that I feel like I would say is expectations is I'm a little ratchet. Mm -hmm. Ratchet. I'm a little ratchet sometimes. You know, uh I can be a little mean? What I'm sorry. Mean? What does that mean? <laughs> I mean like uh, I don't know. Sometimes I can be, I don't know, like uh, just real goofy and just real funny, like, eh, girl, what that? or something like that. I can just be real, mm -hmm. like, out there, like, mm, please. Um, and sometimes, you know, I just really want to monitor what comes out of my mouth because I don't want to um, be, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, or like road rage. That's a perfect example. Like what? the energy that I give in the car, like, I mean, I call somebody all type of names. Like to me, I don't want to be speaking and have that energy and then praise God in the next second with that mouth, you know? So okay, I think yeah. that that is something that um, I want to work on that um, my expectations might not match what I want from a man for is that. Okay. So you got road rage. Okay. Let me write <laughs> that down. Hmm. Right. Now what, what, where did the road rage come from? You seem so calm. What, what's up with the road rage? I don't like driving. I don't like cars. People don't know how to drive. And it's cars are just dangerous. And it really just, it really grinds my gears. Okay. All right, then. Have you ever been in a car accident? <laughs> I have. Uh oh, what happened? I have. Um, Actually, I was trying to, with all the construction, construction that's in Indiana, Indianapolis, Indiana, Um, I was, um, on a highway, actually trying to veer over to get on another exit. And mm -hmm. I ran into the middle of the highway. It was actually my fault. Wait a minute, you ran into the middle of the highway. You just you just swerved out into traffic, you're saying? So um, I am trying to, here's the highway, and here's the highway. I'm trying to veer over to this highway, and I hit the median. It's like the little black trash bins yeah, in the yeah, middle. Yeah, yeah water yeah, in it. I'm sorry? Yeah, water in them. Saved oh, my wow. life. Wow, so you hit Saved those. My Total oh, my so. car. Very traumatizing. Mm. Mm. Well, I'm glad you're Walked safe. Walked out with not a scratch on me. Woo! Yes. Oh, so, so, yeah, so you probably upset or had road rage and you was trying to merge over and, and, and the anxiety of just driving out there probably got the best of you? Yeah, just, yeah, because it was traffic for 30, traffic, trying to get over. Let me over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm glad we got that. I want to circle back and finish up this this dating thing here. Do okay. you think that that men uh, are supposed to pay for stuff on a date too, or are you one of those independent women like I pay for my own? I ain't gonna need a man to pay for me. Where, where are you at on that stance? Uh oh. Okay. Um, I went through a season where I was very, very nice. Um, whatever you want, we can get it. Like, I got it, you got it. We eat yeah. steak and lobsters. Like, it is what it is. But I noticed that some men want mothers. Some men want you to take care of them. Like, mm. some men got too comfortable to the point where you pull up and y'all order food and he looking at you like, what oh, you gonna no. do? And I'm like, oh, you thought I was gonna pay? And that's right. because I have been paying, because I have been doing it. Oh, mm -hmm. Ooh, it's, it's hard out here, Wardy Ward. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I already so, know. I already know, yeah. Definitely, um, definitely, uh, 
I can pay for your food. You know, you do this time. Let's go have. Um, I mean, I really love to uh, spoil my man, but now I just kind of got into a point where I was like, I got to see what you can do first because I know what I can mm. do. Mm. I know that's right. <laughs> it's, it's a... <laughs> I can I can see your position. A lot of people I don't necessarily agree with, but you were willing to put yourself out there and lead by example. So I, I can appreciate that because sometimes uh, men are expected to pay all the bills, slay the dragon, bring home the bacon, understand this woman, give you a conversation, be faithful and all that. And then, you know, so <clears throat> if, if you're doing all that, then he definitely needs to step up because I find that when I talk to those couples, that dating is all about spending money, going out. So we can talk on Zoom for 90 days, you know, get to know each other before we go out and then slowly go because I, I just don't like people to just, just waste their money and time, you know, when, when it's you never know, you know. So I'm glad you were right. able to do that. Were, were you hurt before by dating? Or did you get hurt? Or are you? I know we all yeah. have our story. Did, oh, that, yeah. did, that, did that kind of put you on the shelf of like, hey, I'm going to push back on this and get more to uh, work? Or... I believe so. Um, yeah, I believe so. I think every situation helps me um, monitor or modify myself a little bit because I'm the only thing that I can change. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I have learned not to beat myself up about it, but I do always self-reflect and be like, what about me made you feel like you could do that or made mm -hmm. you feel like it's okay? Um, what 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 did I, what was my energy that I gave off to you that made you feel like that it, like you were capable of doing this to me and be okay with it or, you know, that I was deserving of those actions. So I definitely always self-reflect and just see like, oh, okay, well, you, I mean, you did, answer the phone at 11 o'clock at night at the end of the day that's a grown man and mm -hmm. if you wanted him to respect you in this way you should have started it off with uh get, getting that respect in the in that way absolutely yeah i think it's easier to lighten up later on than tighten up later on because once you set that precedence it's pretty much how it's gonna go you know so yeah. i definitely understand that so i had asked about growing up with the father because i want to know since you didn't have that that man around what what do you think a perfect marriage for you would look like? How would it look? Mm. Laughter. Mm -hmm. Laughter, goofiness, um, just uh just because it's um I heard about something some um married couple did nice this um I'm not gonna say no names award <clears throat> uh received <laughs> some flowers and you know I I would love to give my man flowers like I know some men like I oh, know I don't like them but it was just the thought of him receiving flowers and thinking like hey let me take them to my wife like he could have kept them on his desk he didn't even have to get any um or anything like that so just the you know just hearing about that story just something like just because you know mm -hmm. yeah um it's definitely important making sure you keep that spark is definitely important yeah. um um, definitely having the Lord, you know, oh, and that's yeah. what I, uh, that's what I read uh, recently that made me open my eyes to my singleness is that when you are in a relationship, you are geared to pleasing that person, to honoring that person, doing what you can. But now, you know, in your singleness, I have all advantage to fully focus on serving God. And I don't have that barrier, that fight where I'm like, oh, I'm trying to please him or I'm trying to please God when mm -hmm. God is the beginning and the end and he's the first right so i'll, I'll find a mango yeah you're, you're right so th that that's good that you, you you're aware of that stuff so i see you've been studying and, and applying and uh matter of fact one of my favorite scriptures is in proverbs where uh it says uh the man says there are many women capable but you you exceed them all and i, I always said if i was a woman i think i'd I would want to live to that, you know, because uh, really I feel women are a gift to men from God. Yeah. So a gift is a very good thing. But enough yeah. of that. Let's move on. Let's move on. Now we know about all that. I want to talk about work. What do you do for a living? What, what's your your main thing you do now? Um, right now I am a case manager for the homeless population. Uh, meaning I'm I'm their advocate. Um. Mm -hmm. I find resources for them. I get them housing, you know, furniture, food support, mental support services, substance abuse, budgeting. 
I'm their mama. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mama. How did you get into that field? Um, well, I went to school for social work. Um, um, I started in the school of social work because I wanted to figure out why the brain did what it did or why people did what they did. Mm -hmm. Um, and with that, I was working in the school system, teaching healthcare, mental health challenged adults, uh, just all that type of things. Um, my passion was to create a um, program for after-school athletic kids to help support, you know, with their eating or just help support mm -hmm. uh, families and parents so kids can be, you know, in uh, programs after school and not be so stressed out. What am I going to eat? They hungry. They starving. Um, and then in 2022, um, I was working in the schools, you know, and everything shut down with COVID, and I was just definitely not – uh, wanting to go back into that um environment um and but my brain just shifts to well how are the homeless people eating like how are they you know what are they doing what where's their support like what's going on with them so I find myself finding organizations going downtown you know just passing out food just talking to them touching the grin um and then I uh my internship um um was at a recovery cafe of Indy where the okay. predominant uh, population there was the um, homeless population. It wasn't all homeless, but it gave me the first hand to hand with that population and just hearing their stories, just knowing that homeless looks different for a lot of people or um, the beginning of homeless looks different for a lot of people. Um, and so then after graduating from there, oh, I actually did go back to be a preschool teacher. And mm. then I got um, promoted to be a case manager and um, I was able to help support pay people's rent. And then um, I was blessed with the position where I am now, where I work hand on hand, front to front, one on one with the homeless populations, uh, getting them housed, uh, getting their resources, getting documentations for immigrants and yeah. getting people's courts, a big, I mean, uh, uh, felonies and stuff expunged. Like, it's amazing. It's amazing. Okay. So, What's the most challenging part of that job for you to do that type of work? Um, I would honestly say it's because um, the money that I'm working with is grant money. So, oh. you know, when you get money from people, you got to do it their way. Um, oh, yeah. So I think yeah. I think that that probably is the hardest thing because of, I'm here because I want to. So I want to work from the heart mm -hmm. and I can't always do that. So I think that's probably the hardest thing that there is no black and white. There is no, right. you do this, this happens. It's very up in the air. Yeah, yeah, I understand. It's like going from a, uh, Android phone to iPhone. iPhone mm -hmm. tend to give you more uh, rules that, you know, benefit you in different ways. So I can respect that. Mm -hmm. So are you working on any side hustles for yourself? You seem to have that entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, are you just doing anything for you or is it just, just doing the main thing? Um. Well... I um I don't know when it started, maybe last year, no, 21. I don't know what happened. I just started um I am um brand. Um um I was maybe 2019-18, I was battling with my spirituality because um I realized that you know God name is uh Jesus' name is Yeshua, I'm not God and Yahweh and all of that. So I'm angry with God, like what are you doing? I'm calling the wrong name, what's going on? And reading the word I came across the scripture when Moses went to Pharaoh and he said well, who am I supposed to tell him sit me when you come he said tell mm. him I am. I am and that just changed my life it really changed my life so I began to do some self-care um products um branded self-care products with the I am because um it was very powerful for me it changed mm. my it changed my whole perspective of and everything of how I viewed our father Mm. So that's how okay. that started. And then I also do uh, my motivational speaking on TikTok as well. Okay. Um, I do that as well. So what, yeah. what do you talk about? You just, just motivate just whatever you're feeling that day or just kind of share your experiences? Or what, what, what's um, your platform? I feel like whatever the father gives me, it's all spiritual. Um, uh, I do want to kind of get more into just kind of a... Um, uh, motivation I mean or incorporated both but it's always very just spiritual of what I feel like the father has shown me or mm -hmm. he's told me to say to some uh, to his children so it's always just motivation encouraging messages that I feel like I've heard 
Okay. It sounds like when you get married, this guy, he's going to have to be deep in that word. He got to know his scripture. I so. heard. That's what someone told me. They was like, you're going to need it. I'm like, really? I don't, I don't, honestly, I don't think so because I know where I've come from. Like, mm -hmm. I do definitely want a leader. But I feel like God is saying, maybe you may have to be a lead. Maybe you may have to be the example. Maybe you may have to bring him, you know, mm -hmm. closer to me. So mm -hmm. it may not look like what I think it should. He's got to be this and he's better be praying every day. He better be a pastor. I may be that light for him. So I need mm -hmm. to reprogram my mind so it can look like what he wants for me and not what I think. He should come and be just this perfect man of God. And it may not look like that. So he yeah, might be like a that. gang gang. Right, yeah, yeah. Oh, so you do like you like a so you 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 like the roughneck dudes. You like you like your little uh, uh, um, 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 never mind, uh, never mind. <laughs> I got the hands. Let's move on. So you said you went to college. What college did you go to? Uh, I graduated from IUPUI School of Social Work. Okay, so what made you choose that school? Um. Honestly, when I started school, I just know I needed something different. And I knew I didn't want to work physically all my life. Mm -hmm. I was just doing something, to be honest. I never knew that it would end up where it is. I would, <laughs> I didn't even know. I didn't have no one, you know, helping me. So it was a lot of things I did wrong with applying. Like, mm -hmm. but I, I did it. So, yeah. yeah did you it was nothing major? specific about the school at all. You change your major a couple of times before you finish. I that didn't. Mm -mm. What? I knew I wanted wow. to go for social work. You just you just focused in on that. Okay. Wow. I so, don't know. Yeah. Are you um interested in furthering your education or are you just gonna make that bachelor's do what it do? Um I I personally am not because I see me working right beside people who have masters or you know that and we are on the same we got right. the same, we doing the same thing. Like it's the, um, I mean, sometimes like, just like me getting so independent, I feel like I rank myself out of relationships. Sometimes you can rank yourself out of a job as well because they can mm -hmm. pay me the same thing. They going to, you know, pay me to do the same job, but uh, they don't want to pay you because they'll have to pay more. So it don't really, right. like, and so now you are, about, are out of a job because they're like, oh, I can just pay her to do it. And it's still going to be good money. Uh, but uh, people that I run across, they always encourage me and say, go back and get your master's, get your master's. So it may be something that I may get inclined, but uh, right now I am grateful for my my uh, my degrees that I do have. Yes. Yeah, I agree totally. I got a bachelor's as well, and I'm never going back. I started to say, you know what, it's not worth it because you're not promised tomorrow. I'm, I'm just going to enjoy the day and do what I got to do. Got a job, I'm healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm I'm just gonna do what I gotta do. That day ain't nothing to play with either. <laughs> boy, they better come on and uh wipe out these school loans. Quit playing with your boy. Biden. <laughs> yeah, they keep teasing me here. But uh we're gonna move on to the second part of this show. This is called okay. Rapid Fire, getting to know you questions. Again, this is What's Up Award TV and What's Up Award the Podcast. We're based out of Minneapolis, a self-help podcast, and we're interviewing Queen today. We're in Afghanistan. Okay. First question in this round is who has had the biggest influence on your life and why? The biggest I influence. think you know that question. Well, I mean human. I know God, but definitely oh. uh, Yahweh for sure, but what human has the biggest influence on your life? Human. Anybody influential in your life there? Uh, anybody who you look up to? Anybody? Maybe you look up to yourself. Yeah. Uh, well, you said all your family's gone. So just you and the Indian, uh, Indianapolis by yourself? No, no other yeah. family members here? Nope. Oh, my auntie, she's here and, you know, her children. Uh, so you do have somebody you kick it with on a regular. I'm sorry. Okay. So you do have somebody you kick it with on a regular then, since your aunt is here. You spend a lot of time over there. Who do you spend time with? The cats? Okay. All right. Let's <laughs> tell, me <about> your, <laughs> tell me about your TikTok platform again. Has anything gone viral on there? That since you've been doing a TikTok. Yes. 
And that was another reason why I went and wanted to capitalize on the I am because that video that I made uh, went viral, had uh, a lot of views, had a lot of uh, um, what's it when they remake it or um, yeah, yeah, reposting and all that stuff, yeah, yep, and they do side by sides. I can't, I'm going blank. Duet, thank you. Yes, yeah, they do a yeah, lot yeah. of duets on that. So yes, that that put me on the map. Hmm. What was you talking about? Uh, that was about Moses and how you know I'm like Jesus. What's going on? And uh, I thought your name was this, and he said, "Who I am? Who I am?" He said, mm -hmm. "I am your healer. I am your counselor." I yeah. said, "Oh, he's so detailed. Thank right. you. Right? Yeah, <laughs> changed my life. Absolutely." Uh, one thing I like about Moses, I studied a lot about him as well, too. I'm a student of the Bible. And uh, for one, did you know his wife was black? That's that's interesting. She's from the tribe of Cush. And also, okay. when Moses, Moses left that life of privilege, it took him years. And he was already a meek man, but it took him years before he really got to where he needed to be. So I was like, wow, that he showed patience. Just can you imagine walking around with six million people following you and you're responsible for them and they murmuring yeah. and grumbling and rumbling and you boy. Yeah. Woo, dude, dude. Yeah, he, he did his thing. I give it to him. Yes, he did. Uh, uh next question is what is something you wish you were better at? I'm sure you do a lot of things great, but is there anything that Queen wishes she was better at today? Um, yes. Um, I really wish I was better with my energy or like getting or um maybe like staying consistent with things because sometimes like when I get off work or whatnot, I just be wanting to just chill. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm blessed that I can't do that, but I could be doing yoga or I could be doing something else. And I just be like, mm. so I think I don't know what that's called, but you want to relax, chilling? I need to do more, get more things done or something more proactive. Mm -hmm. I don't. I mean, I do get. The, I don't want to say that because I definitely do. Yeah. I think I want to be more consistent with working out. I want to, you know, I think that or like, uh, posting my videos. Like, I feel like now I've kind of, I've been focusing on other things, which are good things. But I feel like God is like, you can do it all. You know, mm -hmm. you can really do it all. Um. Just try to balance, maybe that balance. Yes, yeah. Balance, balance. everything that he has given me. There mm -hmm. you go. And, and it seems like you focus on self-care too, because you mentioned earlier that you're doing all those wonderful things with other people. Sometimes we have to make time or schedule time to do something for self too. So yeah. that's important. Uh, mm -hmm. Next question. If you could be a girl or a guy, you get to choose, which one would you choose? If you had the choices. And we're going to start over. If you want to do it, Either one. Uh, I probably will be a guy. Because? <laughs> the only reason why is because ministration. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Takes me out every time. Yeah, um, I definitely would take that option. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, I think that's probably the only thing. Um, And then, I mean, I'd be a guy because, you know, women, you know, we're all our assets is out there. You know, they look at me, they're like, oh, look at, you know, but. Are you, you self-conscious about yourself? Smart. I'm sorry. You self-conscious you self about yourself? Um, I think I am a little bit because. um, I, I don't know how to say this. I haven't always looked like this. I work to look like this. So. I think it can be intimidating sometimes. Uh, and I try to be respectful, um, you know, like in my working environment, you know, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. I just try to be respectful and kind of cover up a little bit. But sometimes I just be like, I'm a girl. Like, it's not my fault I look like this. You know, it's not my mm -hmm. fault. I'm not trying to just be all out like, Ooh. but I am blessed to look like this in my age. And I mean, I try to take care of myself on the inside and the out, so mm -hmm. I don't think I should have to cover it up. But do you think that the girls feel uncomfortable walking around men with certain clothes on, and should men feel that way walking around women with certain clothes on? Uh, I mean, for sure, I did. I do for sure. This closure. I literally went to a girlfriend's house last night, and um. No, I'm every time I go over there, I'm dressed. But I was just like, we're just watching a little quick movie. It's 10 o'clock at night. We're just hanging out. 
I had my bonnet on. I mm -hmm. just threw me a little dress on. And I walk in there, she got a friend there, she got a boyfriend there. And I automatically was like, girl, I ain't got no bra on. But to them, <laughs> like, girl, what? But to me, that is so disrespectful. Like, I'm not, yeah. I'm like, I, what, I need a hoodie or something. Like, I know they probably yeah. was like, that ain't that deep. But to me, I'm not about to be around your your boyfriend without a bra on. Like, that's, you know, that's mm -hmm. uh, inappropriate. But for men, I don't think that there is anything that that they would feel uncomfortable with. Maybe, wow. um, no, not really? having their shirt on. Not having their yeah. shirt on. Yeah, that. But skinny but, jeans are popular. I don't know. I guess, I don't know. I'm you not, feel uncomfortable wearing that? I don't think I would do it. That's just not my thing. Because this one guy, he was uh, standing by me. He had on some skinny jeans. And I could see his phone in his pocket. His pants were so tight. I seen the last three phone numbers he dialed. And I was like, hmm, I don't <laughs> think I could do that. But hey, to each his own. Tomato, tomato. Yeah. You know, I'm just saying. I think we all have some insecurities. or, But I guess for women, I've always been amazed at it's like, yeah, you said you work hard to get a nice body and so forth, but then you kind of, you know, people are going to look, but then you're kind of apprehensive to to show this it off. True. It's like, I want attention when I want it, but not when I don't want it, but I want it from who I want it from and not who I don't want it from. Ah. Yeah, this is ah. true. Ooh. This is true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Next question. <laughs> what do you think people like most about you and what do you think they like least about you? Good question. And I actually think that it's the same thing, to be honest. I honestly Ooh. think people love my light. They love my positivity. But I also think that that's one thing that they hate. That you can't, I mean, I've literally had someone say, I want to see you when you're upset because you can't always just be okay mm -hmm. or you can't always be so acceptive. Um, so I think that the joy that the father gives me, people love and they hate it at the same time. They can't stand it. Mm -hmm. They can't stand it. That's a good answer. I'm going to use that one. Mm -hmm. um, well, when is the last time you lost your cool man? Um, like got up when I was driving the other day. Uh oh. What happened there? <laughs> Lord, forget. I mean, I almost, yeah, it was bad. That's why I, ooh. <laughs> I almost <laughs> got out the car. Like it was traffic, bumper to bumper, just craziness. And um, I am on a veering lane, God. I am veering over to the highway. And this mm -hmm. a man of, uh, this Caucasian man was just like breaking, like moving up, throwing his hands up like, you can't get up, why are you trying to get over? And I'm just looking like, sir, this is a merging lane. Like, what do you mean? Why am I trying to get over? This is a merging mm -hmm. lane. So I ended up like going up and still getting over, but I was so angry. Like I turned around. I almost rolled my window down to give that man some words. Mm, you're going to tell him about the Bible. Okay, that's good. Give him see some that? verses and some chapters of some there you of go. the Father. See, see the, the yes, light is shining. I was just, that's why I lost <laughs> my crew. Okay. I don't like well, that. Mm, yeah, because you, you feel like, man, he got me. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes it's good to role play in that and envision yourself in scenarios. And how you would handle it, and then when you're in that situation, you can like just revert back to that sometime too. Because uh, I used to have a little bit of road rage as well, so I like to think I'm in recovery. So good. Yeah. Do you consider yourself to be smart? Are you a smart person? Um, yeah, I think I am intelligent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest risk you've ever taken? Um. Uh oh. <laughs> Uh-oh, hold on tight, Oh, y Lord, what type of talk show is this? Because I want to say the first thing that came to my mind. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, you can just tell me. You can just Lord, be honest. Lord, forgive me. Okay, I'm going to give you a better about you. The first thing that came to my mind was having unprotected sex. Yeah, that, that is a risk. That's an 18-year risk, that if not longer. Oh, that that's, is so that's, funny. I think uh, we've all but... taken that risk. Oh, Lord, I, that, I, uh, that now, I would, oh. that would, I would freak out. Um, But... Mm -hmm. Um, a risk that I have taken, I would probably say like what I'm going through now. I mean, I don't know. I guess. I mean, everything that I do. I mean, I feel like me starting this business was a risk. Me getting on TikTok speaking and doing all that was a risk. You know, me going out, going to college. Me, uh, that was a risk. Me going to. Mm -hmm. 
uh, applying for a home. I'm a homeowner now in the name of Jesus. That was a risk. Yes, I got the acceptance this morning. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Oh, so now you can go out and find a place. Huh? You already found it or you got to go out and find a place now? Yeah, I found it. My offer got accepted this morning. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, Man. now I'm just waiting to close. Okay, that's what's up. Um, let me ask you this question. Uh, if somebody was to play you in a movie, what celebrity would you want to play you? Uh, celebrity. <laughs> Monique, she is just a main Monique. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just like, because she can do uh, a variety, and I'm a variety type of person, so she could be funny, serious, mm -hmm. all of that. So that's me. I, I think if I was you, I probably would have picked a Kiki Palmer. You kind of remind me of her. Oh, yeah. That is a good yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, you, Kiki have, Palmer. Have you met any celebrities? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who'd you meet? Um, I've met Life Jennings, um, uh, a few basketball players, um, okay. yeah, right, and some cool. other names I don't want to mention. No, I'm just mm. <laughs> what type of what type of music do you listen to when you're driving, other than gospel? That's only only gospel. Is all you listen to? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. I listen to the Bible. Um, no, I'm just kidding, guys. I am not perfect. Please. Okay, I'll be oh, listening no. to Megan Thee Stallion. I'll be in there. Tat, tat, tat. No, I'm just kidding. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, you got to have a right I music. love oh. I love me some Megan and Light Skin Keisha. Um, I try to do it in uh, proportions for sure yes. because I know that, you know, music would definitely play on your mind, but I pray and ask God. I'm like, Lord, meet me halfway, you know, because sometimes <laughs> I got to remind myself who I am, not only in Christ, but as I mm. walk on this earth, and I'm a bad one, okay? So, um, but I love the 90s R&B. Yeah, that probably yeah, would be it. the gospel mm. of the 90s R&B. Mm-hmm. You don't listen to Christian gangster rap? Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> What's the most useless purchase you've made? That blender sitting over there. <laughs> wow. I use my blender. I'll, I'll make a smoothie every day. So I'm, I'm, I used I'm to that. be so on it, but I I don't think I've used it in the past year. Mm -hmm. That don't rule that one out. That one may that may come back. Uh, okay, three more questions in this round before we wrap it up. What is your dream car? What's your dream car? Um, wow, I think that changes because I thought my dream car was a a, a Hummer, a, a Wrangler, when I went out and got a car. But the car that I have, Wrangler could never. Um, so probably my dream car would be a um a, um the electric cars. Yeah, they're nice. Yeah. Either one, it doesn't even have to be a Tesla, but just I know because I see they're coming out with a lot more. So mm -hmm. yeah, check out that poster by Volvo. That thing is off the chisel. Oh my god, I love that car. Um, next question: Walmart or Target? Market Walmart or Target? Mm -hmm. Myers. What? Wow, that took a turn. What I've never heard people check, take that up. I thought most women were Target lovers. Most so women, like, yeah, but I'm more of a Meyer girl than Target. Okay, all right, yeah. Definitely yeah. not Walmart. Uh, final question. If you could sit down with one person, famous or not, and have a 20-minute conversation with, who would that be? Michelle Obama. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you like about her? Um, I mean, it, behind every strong man is a strong woman. And mm -hmm. uh, she was real and strong at the same time. Uh, she, um, I just want to ask her how she did it. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, mean, how did you be a uh, a president's wife? Like, well, I mean, sure I know she played a big part in his life. Absolutely. But I'm sure she, she, you know, she didn't like him at first. So I'm sure she didn't know he was going to do that. So I know she had a lot to, a lot of work to do. But she seemed like she's type A to me. I could be wrong, but she seemed like he got her stuff together. So, yeah. Strong. Yeah. Okay. And last question. What is your favorite movie all time? Um, I don't think I have a favorite one. 
Mm-hmm. What's the last movie you saw? <laughs> Big clone uh, Tyrone. Oh, oh, the last movie I don't watch TV too much, but the last one I watched was State Property. <laughs> That's what I'm. A- wow, I had to go back in my role at State Property. It was back in eighteen. Okay, yeah, that was a good movie. That was a good movie. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, so you never saw Love Jones or? Um, maybe once or twice, but not enough to remember. Oh. I know, I know, I know. I'm horrible. Okay. I'm, no, I'm just playing. No, it is a good movie. It's a classic, but that's an older movie. But uh, all right, Queen, let me go ahead and close this show up here because I know you got stuff to do today. It's been a fun, pleasing pleasure just talking to you today. You know, can you share where your social media footprints can be found so our audience members can find out more about you and see these viral videos you got out there? Please, please. Um, right now I'm solely on TikTok. Um. My name is Someone to Remember. That's S-U-M, the number one, the number two. Remember, R-E-M-E-M-B-A, not with the E-R, with the A at the end. Hey. Someone to Remember. And that's okay. that's solely where I am right now. Um, I will be adventuring off to Instagram and different things like that, but I'm on TikTok. Okay. Yeah, so we can get you on Instagram and YouTube to get you on both of them yes. so the world can see your light, keep you shining out there because we need Man. people like you out there. So Man. is there anything that you want to add or clear up or retract before we begin, before I get my final thoughts? You give us so much information about you. Is there anything else you want to add? Um, I just want to say what I feel like God is showing me in this season. Um with anything, relationship, job, anything that you want, any goals that you want to complete. So always seek ye the kingdom first and everything else will be added unto you. Matthew 6, 33 and 34. Um, did, oh, bonus question. Did you travel? Have you traveled outside the U.S. by chance? I have. Yeah, I have. I just came back from Punta Cana and uh, Dominican Republic. Man, you're doing the most. Boy, you're getting it in. <laughs> you, you're taking advantage of not having them kids. I like that. That's that's awesome. Keep keep that energy up and, and let us Thank know. You. And Yeah. So, all right, let me go ahead and get my final thoughts before we wrap this up. <clears throat> okay. My final thoughts are these, people. Just get out there and live. Live life. Living your life on the sidelines or stuck in the past sucks, in my opinion. It's like spending your life savings on a vacation to a place you've already visited, knowing you had the worst experience there. Or could it be a dead-end job or even a bad relationship? Just do something and be on to a new destination. Until next time, remember, everybody has a story to tell, but we just want to know what's yours. My name is Warrior Ward, and thank you, Queen, for dropping by the What's Up with Ward Studios. Until next time, peace. Peace.